Hey everyone, Giselle here, and good morning. Today is day one of the Newt's Readathon. It's like 8.20. I need to leave for work in like 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> I need to do my hair, obviously. But I've started off my day with listening to some of The Woman Who Smashed Codes by Jason Fagon. I don't think this is going to be the first book I finish, but I want to read a little bit every day. So that's how far I am through so far. And that's my first update. And I definitely won't be updating at all while I'm at work because I have no time to read at work at all. But I'll talk to you guys when I get home. I just got back from work and I made some pretty good progress on the woman who smashed codes which I'm very happy about. It doesn't look like I'm super far through but you, I don't know, you do have to keep in mind that this is a, a biography and nonfiction, and that um, a lot of the book at the end are all just like where they got their information from and stuff so none of that is actually part of it so that's how much I've read it which I'm super happy about. So I'm listening to it and I'm at the 25% mark. So I've made it a quarter of the way through, and that's just over, like, three hours. It's, like, three hours and 20 minutes. So I'm super happy with that. I usually prefer listening to nonfiction in the morning because I feel like my mind can just, like, concentrate on it better at that time. But I'm so into the story that I think I'm going to keep listening for a bit more, and then maybe I'll move on to something else later tonight. And then the other thing that I was listening to is The Case of the Bizarre Bouquet. Uh, this is the third book in the Enola Holmes mystery series. And we're 18% of the way through. It's a very short book. We're at the 40 minute mark. Um, and by we're, I mean Christopher and I. So I'm making Chris listen to these books with me. I've already read them <laughs> multiple times. And so I'm making Chris listen to them. Uh, and we just started listening to this one today um, to and from work because we commute together because our works are very close together, which is awesome. So we're already almost a fifth of the way through, which is also great so I feel really good about how far I am through so far it's 6 p.m. Um, and we just got back from work so I have lots more time to read tonight and 31 year old Vernon Cooley from Kalamazoo Michigan who had taught school children there and also worked for a time in the factory of Kalamazoo Paper Company It is 9 o'clock and I just hit my goal for the day, which is to listen to seven hours of audiobooks. Um, I don't know if you know how I plan out my reading. I plan it out kind of extensively and I have it all out on a, like a spreadsheet on Google Docs, but I kind of wanted some physical ways to track stuff, so I do have some of those. Um, one that I just drew out just now. I'm going to write down all the books that I've like made progress on each day, so I'll just add the books as I read them and then I chose a different color for each day so it's gonna make a pretty rainbow <laughs> I'm really excited about it um and I have enough to I'm gonna have several greens several blues several purples several pinks things like that so I actually have enough for two whole weeks so it will take me a while to get through but I'm really <laughs> excited about it I had this thought today and that way I'll be able to see like which physically like which books I listen to this much of each day and stuff and I just think it will end up looking really cool so I just drew out that and the three books that I've made progress on today although I haven't finished the first hour of the case of the bizarre bouquets so I didn't I didn't cross it off yet but I wrote down the woman who smashed codes and then I haven't talked about kiss of the spindle yet but I'm listening to kiss of the spindle the author on that is Nancy Campbell Allen and I think I'm like 40 minutes through 50 something like that I'm definitely gonna get to the hour mark so I crossed it off today. I figured I was close enough that I can say I've reached my goal. And, sorry, my hair's looking kind of ratchet. I um, started getting, like, a migraine. I get, like, really intense neck pain before migraines start for me. So I ended up putting, like, a pain relief cream on my neck. I took um, some Excedrin, and then I laid down for a while. So I look... <laughs> A little crazy but today's progress I'm really happy with I haven't showed this yet either and I can link below where I got this but 
Uh, this is a sheet that someone ended up making and it has all the prompts on it. It's actually really cool and I wrote this in um, I think on the 30th so, so this is what my TBR as of the 30th is but my TBR is so subject to change so I also have a blank one so I can fill the books in as I finish them. I haven't finished any yet though so that will have to wait but hopefully I can film me filling it in every time as well. Film me filling it in, yes. But anyway, I am pretty far through uh, the Women Who Smash code. I'm actually past the 40% mark, which is so much further than I thought I would get today. I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I am. Uh, usually I do tend to spread out my nonfiction and just like listen to an hour or two every morning. And that's usually how I do it. And I've been doing it that way for a while and it really works for me, but this is so fascinating and so readable and so engaging that I'm just kind of plowing through it. I definitely won't finish it tonight because uh, it is already 9 p.m. I'll be going to bed in the next few hours, so at most I'll probably only reach like the 50% mark, but that's crazy, and if I do that tomorrow, I'll have my first book finished, which I did not expect, so... Anyway, I'll update you when I have more to talk about. The crickets are quite loud out here. Um, I had to move out here because Chris went in the bedroom and is trying to sleep. It is now 11.16 um, at night and I'm about to go to bed as well. I have work in the morning but I don't have to get up till 8 technically. So so I'm not too fussed about it but I figured I'd update you for my progress with the day because I probably won't read anymore or if I do it will be very little before I pass out. Anyway, I'm really, 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 really happy with my progress for today. I ended up listening to, in total, 10 hours today. So, 7 hours of The Woman Who Smashed Codes and 3 hours of Kiss of the Spindle, not including Enola Holmes. So, I'm almost at 11 hours for the 8 day, which is fantastic. I... I don't know. I know I can meet all the challenges for newts, but at the same time, I know it's going to be hard and I'm going to have to, like, push myself. But that's kind of the point, is that it's a tough readathon if you want it to be, which I enjoy those, so I do. Anyway, what I'm really, really happy about is that, if you see right there, I, made, I reached the 50% mark in my nonfiction, which I was not at all expecting to do today. I'm really astounded with myself. Um, I don't know. I don't mean to sound like I'm bragging, but I just was not expecting that at all. And I'm so glad and I'm enjoying it so much. So I don't know if I'll end up finishing it tomorrow, um, but definitely it'll be finished on Friday at the latest. And I'm really excited to dive back into it tomorrow. And as far as Kiss of the Spindle, I haven't talked about that one too much. It's a steampunk retelling of Sleeping Beauty. And I don't know. So far, it's probably about, like, a two-star right now. Which I should probably just, like, DNF it and move on if I'm going to rate it two stars. <laughs> because that is, like, a goal of mine is to stop reading so many books that I'm not liking. This book just hasn't done anything that has wowed me yet and I felt kind of overwhelmed. Un I felt a little underwhelmed by the first book. This is the second book in the series so I felt kind of underwhelmed by that one as well but this one just really isn't doing it for me. It just hasn't done anything unique. Basically the premise of this one is that she falls asleep for six hours every night in like a death sleep and only like takes one breath every 30 seconds and is like practically dying every night and I really just don't like the male character in this book he's especially obnoxious he's very like I know what's best I'm gonna tell your secret to everyone because I know that you're just too like prideful to ask for help so I'll just tell everyone your secret and stuff like that and I just I, mm, I'm not okay with that and I just I don't know I think it's just trying to make it dramatic and exciting and interesting and I just am not finding it to be such so Mm, I think maybe I'll try to give it like one more hour. I'm three hours in. I'm a third of the way through this book and 
I feel nothing towards it besides just disappointment. So, so maybe I'll do DNF this one, call it quits, and choose another fairy tale retelling because that is so easy for me to do. Ooh, that would actually work out really well because that means that I could switch around my TBR a little bit and you see which as my fairy tale retelling and then put use kill the farm boy as my book magic in it and then i can put realms of mist and ash back on my tbr okay i think i may end up doing that because i had to move it around because kill the farm boy came off of hold from the library which i wasn't expecting it to do i thought i wasn't going to get it until mid-month so i was just reading it, planning on reading it in september but it came off hold so it kind of like messed up my plans and i had to move my tbr around a bit so i may just end up doing that i don't know like i said i'll just give it a little bit more of a chance tonight uh but it will probably be a dnf because i just don't have time to read mediocre books and i don't have time to read mediocre fairy tale retellings either like there's so many amazing fairy tale retellings out there that I just don't need to read this like I really enjoy steampunk and this one is boring but with that being said I will see you in the morning this looks like a book site to Elizabeth the numbers probably correspond to locations in some unknown book So it's Tuesday morning now. I've just meet, reached the nine hour mark in The Woman Who Smashed Codes and I'm really, really enjoying it. We've finally gotten into the World War II part. We were sort of getting into it last night, but now we're like fully into World War II and all the stuff that she did with it, she was incredible. Anyway, I'm really liking this a lot. And also last night I did decide to DNF Kiss of the Spindle. I didn't even listen to very much more. I tried to listen to a few more minutes and I'm like, uh, I'm okay. So I'm not counting that as one of my newts read because I I don't think I got far enough through it to count it for a readathon. But I did end up starting Born to be Wild by Eloisa James and I only got an hour into it, but I did start that last night. So I will be continuing with this today. So in total yesterday, I did end up listening to, I think 11 hours, which is pretty cool. Although three of those hours don't even count, unfortunately. And the clip that you saw earlier, that was me cooking a sweet potato or a yam. I call it a yam. Everyone around here calls it sweet potatoes, so whatever. I ended up cooking one of those for my lunch, so that was me preparing my lunch, because I thought it'd be fun to show you guys. So I have to leave right now. It's 8.40 and I need to head off to work now so that I won't be late. So I just got back from work. It is now 6 p.m. Um, we got back a few minutes ago, like maybe 10 minutes ago. Lunch was delicious. Thanks for asking. Um, I'm really enjoying this as a lunch recently. I mean, this is all my, my second day doing it, but I was like, you know what? I really like yams. I want to eat more of those and I, I'm glad I am. 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 <laughs> So as far as, I'm just having a lane open, as far as the Women Who Smash Codes, I listened to three hours, well, two hours this morning and then an hour this afternoon. I am only have 100 pages left, which I'm really happy about. I'm on page uh, 340, no, 240 and it ends on 340, so like, I'm so close. It's only, it's like 345 is what it is, so I only have a bit left which is awesome. I'm really liking it. It's getting more and more into the World War II section, like I was saying before, and that's all I've done so far today. But tomorrow I don't have work. I don't work Fridays or Sundays, so those are like my big days to read. So I can stay up however late I want tonight, and I always feel like a lot less pressured Thursday nights, so I ex anticipate to get a lot read tonight. And hopefully I will finish my first book, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. I have exactly four hours left to go and I'm listening at not quite two times speed so I will be done in a little over like two hours, maybe like two and a half hours if I listen consistently from this point. Christopher is going to a movie tonight so 
Um, he doesn't leave till I think 8.30 though, but I could totally get this done by like 9, which would be awesome. So I actually decided not to continue on with the woman who smashed codes right away, like not plow through it tonight, because again, I don't know, I feel like my brain is shutting down, and I was listening to it and I was realizing that I just wasn't absorbing it as well. So. I think I'll just try to finish up the last few hours tomorrow morning. So I listened to another hour, I believe. So I just hit my seven hour goal for today and it is 9.10. So a little... <coughs> so I was just like a little bit past my goal, but I figured it's okay. Anyway, um, Chris just texted me like a few minutes ago telling me that he got to the movie safely and that he is going into the theater. So he's already watching the movie by now. He went in kind of late. He didn't, I don't think he saw very many of the previews at all. Anyway, ignore the huge pile of clothes behind me. Chris and I were on vacation and we just got back like a week ago, but I've been sick <laughs> since we got back. Um, coughing a lot and runny nose and just like a cold, but it really wiped me out. So, and then my cough is still pretty bad. So, I just haven't had a lot of energy, but I do want to clean the house tomorrow. That would be awesome. Anyway, so now I'm just listening to um, Born to be Wild. I am hitting the three hour mark right now. I don't think I'll finish it tonight. I don't think I'll finish anything today, unfortunately. I just am tired. And I've been watching a lot of YouTube as well. Just everyone's like posting vlogs right now, like booktube -a vlogs and stuff and so even though I'm not participating I'm really enjoying watching those and stuff so I've just been watching a lot of either booktube or like regular youtube and it's really been hampering my reading time but I still hit my goal so I'm okay for the day anyway despite being sick I'm gonna do something dumb and eat stuff that's not very good for me so right here I have it probably doesn't sound appetizing it's sour cream with powdered sugar in it and I have some blueberry scones, um, and I'm going to eat one. I am not going to eat both because I have self-restraint, but I'm going to have one of these as like a dinnery snack. I never actually ate dinner, I realized, because I was just feeling really blah when I got home from work, so I've just been laying on the bed almost this whole time since getting home. Anyway, I'm doing such a great job of vlogging and I'm really like looking at the camera and stuff super well. I will update you when I actually have something to share. There's some more loud crickets outside, but I wanted to update you on what I've read tonight. So it is now 11 p.m. and Chris is messaging me. He just got out of the movie and he's picking me up some cough. Uh, medicine because um, I've been coughing like crazy this evening. Not been fun. Anyway, so I haven't really made any progress on The Woman Who Smashed Coats since I last talked to you. I, like I've listened to like 10 or 15 minutes just here or there, but I have less than three hours left and I really am enjoying it and, and I'm super excited to finish it tomorrow. I am now five hours through Born to be Wild and if you're wondering like why I have two different phones. This is my old phone. iPhones have horrible battery life, so I'll like switch off charging them and stuff. Anyway, and that way I can like not have to s change my like um, how fast I'm listening to books and stuff. I can just pick it up and go because I listen to books at different speeds depending on which book it is. Anyway, I'm now five hours through Born to be Wild, so I've just passed the halfway mark, and I am really liking it. It's definitely, and this might horrify some of you bookish people out there, but a lot of, uh, romance readers will read series out of order. <laughs> And if you are someone who does that, I just don't recommend it for this series. Sometimes it's okay, and, like, I've done it myself, too. Occasionally I'll just, like, read a certain book in a series, and then I'll go back and read all the other ones. I know, I'm a bad book person. But this one, I feel like you really should read the other books because it makes it make so much more sense. Like, she's crafted this world and this set of characters, and it just wouldn't make as much sense if you didn't 
read it in order. Anyway, I am really enjoying it. Um, Parf is kind of overbearing, but I'm still really enjoying it. And I'm so glad to be back with some of these really fun characters that I really enjoy. It follows really closely um, the characters from the previous book. And I just read that one like last month and really enjoyed it as well. So I'm just having a great time. Um, I'm reading this book for the challenge of to read a book by one of your favorite authors. And it's definitely just putting me in a happy mood. I don't know. I don't, I think it will be a three star book as it's going, but I'm still really liking it. And then the last thing that I've listened to that I want to update you on is Summer Days and Summer Nights. This is by... Well, edited by Stephanie Perkins, and I just listened to the first story. I th I don't know if they're in order. I need to figure out who wrote this first story. Hello. Wait. Just for the bower. Aaron Moon and Stephen Nielsen. Head, scales, tongue, tail. By Lee Bardugo. Okay, so the first story is by Lee Bardugo. I really liked it. I was, I've never read anything by Lee Bardugo before, and I wasn't sure what to, I, to expect from this story, but I really liked it, and I was afraid that it would end in a way that would make me <sighs> upset, but it didn't. Which, I mean, it does say that it's 12 love stories, so I hope they don't, like, do me wrong and make me upset, but this one, I just, it really just, like, warmed my heart and, like, made my toes curl and just made me happy, and I really liked it. The first story so far is a four-star story story. So anyway, I am planning on reading um, a story a day. I've, I don't know how well I'll stick to that, but that's my plans for as of now. So I've added it into the book and this is what my chart looks like so far. So I've drawn the line through the one that I DNF'd and hopefully this will turn into a beautiful rainbow. Another reason that I really want to stick with the whole just reading one a day. I know I've, rest, I've missed the red day, but then I can make a whole rainbow out of them. And it is 16 hours long and there are only 12 stories. So I think I'll only get to the 12 mark in a couple days. I'll just have multiple colors next to each other. But multiple of the same color next to each other. Because, yeah, anyway. Even if it's over an hour, I still want to finish the story. If it's, You get what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I'm excited about this turning into a beautiful rainbow, though, and I hope the yellow shows up. So that is everything that I've read so far um, for day two, and I'm staying ahead of my goals, which makes me really happy. I redid some maths to make sure that everything was going to be okay, and they are. I'm in, a, I'm in a really good place, so as long as I keep this up and keep on smashing it by reading... Um, above what I'm supposed to, I'll be totally set. Let's hope I can read the 15 hours that I want to tomorrow. And now Chris will be home in like mm, probably 30 minutes, so I'm just gonna go lay in bed and keep listening to, I think, Born to be Wild until he gets home, and then we can fall asleep. So I will see you in the morning. Before too long, the conversation wound to a close. They checked the time. You mean to say it's only five minutes after one? My heavens, the lucky said. It had been so long since Elizabeth had talked about her life smashing codes, that a simple conversation felt like an opera. I hope that no two women ever said as many words in so short a time, Elizabeth said. The transcript notes that the women laughed. So it is noon on Friday, and I just finished my first book for the newts. Um, I loved it a lot. I was crying at the end when they died. I mean, obviously both her and her husband died because they were like 50 during World War II. But I was like, <laughs> literally crying. I was like, this is so sad. Why did they have to die? They were like 80. Anyway, I really, really loved it. If you have any interest in this book at all, I really recommend you reading it. It was so fascinating. I thought it was really well written. And you can just tell how much this author like really admired this woman. And her and her husband were incredible people. And what she did specifically 
it was astounding. A good chunk of this book at the end was all about... She didn't have a ton to do with, like, the war happening, like, in Germany and France. But she had a lot to do with what was going on in South America because the Germans were trying to, like, get over there and attack America through there and I didn't know so much of the stuff in this book I mean granted I haven't studied World War II in like 10 years so that could be part of it as well but I did not know like any of the stuff going on in here I learned so much from this and she was so freaking incredible The Code Girls by Liza Mundy is what really got me interested in reading this book I probably would have been interested in it anyway but The Code Girls it mentions her and it does talk about her and her husband like during World War One, and how a lot of the stuff that they did at that time really ended up setting the foundation for how we were able to break codes during World War II and what they did really set that up so much but I don't know she was so amazing and yet she downplayed all of her achie achievements her whole life she always put everything on her husband and always just talked about how much he did and how incredible he was which he, he was and oh my gosh their relationship or <laughs> such relationship goals Oh my gosh, anyway, I recommend, and I really loved it, and you can see that I I filled out my first book, which I don't have any points yet because I got an E, but the next book I finish is going to be the A, so I will have one at that point, point. and I also, this is the one that I filled out a few days ago, so we'll see how well this stays, but I just want to see, like, how I do and color in the books as I go. We'll I think will be fun. I actually really like how that looks just coloring in the end, so I think I'll do this for this one as well. Anyway, and this is what my little book thing looks like so far, and we have the yellow going in on some of them now, and I can finish up the code, uh, the woman who smashed codes up there. And then, as you can see, I only have one hour left of Born to be Wild. I woke up this morning at like 6 or 6.30, I took more cough medicine and then laid in bed for two hour, for an hour trying to fall asleep, but and I listened to two hours of Born to be Wild since I'm listening at two times speed, and then I fell asleep and I slept till like 10.30. Um, I think my cough medicine like kind of knocked me out. <laughs> so now I'm awake, I just finished this, and I plan to read a lot more today, so hopefully that will happen soon. So it is 12.30 now, and I just finished my second book for Newt, which is doing pretty good, I think, especially since I, I don't know if I'll be able to finish another book today, but I think I'll mostly be able to get through another book today. Anyway, the second book I finished was obviously Born to be Wild by Eloisa James. Honestly, this book kind of was disappointing. I really, really enjoyed book two. But this one falls more in the category of book one for me, where it's... Mm, not super rememberable and wasn't that engaging like I liked it but it's probably like a 2.5 I don't know like there was nothing inherently wrong with it I guess it just wasn't very good especially compared to some other really wonderful books by this author that I've read like obviously this is counting for a book by one of my favorite authors and I just feel like it didn't live up to that. I don't know. I still liked it. I just didn't love Parth. I don't think he deserved her. And there's like this part where she's sick near the beginning. And she has lost a ton of weight because she had the flu and she was throwing up and stuff. And he's like constantly forcing her to eat. Which like I get good intentions like you're worried about her losing so much weight. But he's like constantly forcing her to eat and constantly talking about how skinny she is and how she needs to gain weight and blah blah blah. And it was just, I don't know, it, it rubbed me really really wrong that he was making her eat. Like literally picking up the fork and shoving it in her mouth. And so... I don't know. It was, I'll probably give it two stars on Goodreads. I just was disappointing. My least favorite out of all of them. And 
they, at the ends of each of these books, she kind of leaves like a little mm, teaser for the next book. And so at the end of book one, she left one for book two that got me pretty interested in book two and I ended up really liking that. So then the, at the end of book two, it, le and it gave a teaser for book three, obviously, which I was like, okay, yeah, that seems like that could be really interesting. And I get disappointed. And the one that it just gave for book four, the teaser, I don't like that character. I don't like the male character in that one either. So not excited about that. And I noticed that in book... In book two, I actually had the same problem with the male guy in book two as I did in book three, where he kind of, like, forces her to do stuff. Like, the example that I can think of of book two off the top of my head is that he, like, wants her to have nicer clothes. And so, like, at one moment she takes off her shoes to, like, put her feet in a pond, and he takes her shoes and throws them in the pond or lake and he's like oh well now I'll have to buy you new ones and she's like no I don't want your charity or money because she's quite poor she's like what is wrong with you why would you take that that's something that I earned and bought myself and now you threw them away and now I'm gonna have to buy myself more you're terrible and he does multiple things like that where just these men are just very possessive and like oh, I know what's best for you and it's really creepy and really sits ill with me anyway enough of a rant about that one thing I did quickly want to mention also about the woman who smashed codes um her husband dealt with serious depression and contemplated suicide a lot so maybe be wary of that going in if you're um triggered by that but just something that I felt like I should mention, it also talks about people getting tortured. I mean, it was wartime and they needed to get information and they did talk about it, not too fully, but it does say the things that happened to some of these um, like German spies that they caught. And the other thing that I wanted to mention about the woman who smashed coats, just something I noticed when I was reading it, she was, there's this daughter, Elizabeth had a daughter and in a letter that she ended up writing to her, she said, Oh, frab just frab just day and I was like hey <laughs> Jabberwocky um it's a it's a quote from Lewis Carroll and I noticed that when reading it and I was like she liked just like through the looking glass and Alice in Wonderland this makes me so happy so I was just really another wonderful thing about Elizabeth she has a great taste in literature apparently anyway let's fill in my paper And with that, I officially have an E in Muggle Studies. Pretty good, I'd say, uh, for day three, for reading longer books and working full time. I'm, I'm happy with that. I definitely need to knock out a lot more today, though, to uh, stay on top of trying to get through all 36. We'll see what happens. It's very fresh into the readathon, so. So it is now 5 p.m. and Chris will be home in any time in the next hour. He he really doesn't have like a set time. It's just like basically whenever he finishes his work, he'll be home. So hopefully it's soon. But I figured I'd update you with my reading. I have now listened to another full book. Um, what happens at Con by Kathy Yardley? This is the 
fourth book in the Fandom Hearts series, and it was only six hours long, and I listened to it really fast. I listened to most of it at three times speed or 2.5 speed because I really didn't enjoy it, <laughs> which I'm really, really bummed about. So this, I really, really adored the other books in this series. Whoa, the sun just came out. But the other books in these series, um, the first one is Level Up, which I liked, but, like, it wasn't that great. And I didn't really like the novella, but book two was so good, One True Pairing, and I also really enjoyed Game of Hearts. So I was super excited about this book. I pre-ordered it. It just came out on Tuesday, so I'm, I'm getting to it, like, a couple days after it came out. And it just... It follows Abraham, who is really sexist and... I don't find likable and he tries and he's getting better but some of the things he says I mean I understand like redeeming characters and stuff but I still never got over some of the things he says he's just yeah really sexist and says a lot of like horrible things and I don't know. And then she ends up dealing. She's in a STEM field of work. And she's, like, she's studying, like, viruses. And her, like, supervisor is horrendous as well. And I understand what the author was trying to do here. And I appreciate it, but I didn't enjoy it at all. So it's, like, a two-star book. If it was just purely enjoyment levels and how I liked the characters, it would be like a one-star book. And the con in this, I just, it didn't fit the tone of the other books for me. And I'm really, really, really sad about it. I, ugh, it could have been so good, but it wasn't. Anyway. I showed you guys me making tortillas, by the way. I never commented on it. I made tortillas for myself for, like, lunch, and they're really delicious. Homemade tortillas are some of the easiest things to make. They take so little time. There are only a couple ingredients, and they're so delicious, and I just put butter on them and eat them right off the pan when they're, like, all hot, and ugh, it's so good. So that's what I had for lunch, and now I am this far through on my page. I'm actually really liking how this is turning out. I think it looks really cool and I'm super excited to see like the blues and greens come in. But there's what happens at con and I, I finished marking that off. I wrote a Duke by default on there and I listened to like 10 minutes of it so I need to get back and listen to it. I was just like, what am I really in the mood for? And I'm like, oh, I'll just read this one. Uh, it counted, let me see, I have it in here as either Care of Magical Creatures, read a book less than 160 pages, or Set in the Future, a book under 200 pages. Initially I had it a book under 200 pages, but I think I'm going to move it to the other spot, and we'll see, because Rappuccini's Daughter might have to get bumped, depending on some other stuff coming up this month. So that's what I'm doing so far, and now I can, I'm almost at my goal for the day, I think I'm at... 12? Yeah, I'm at 12 hours for the day, and I wanted to get to 14, I think, um, is, like, my, my goal for the weekends, so I only have, like, technically, like, an hour or an hour and a half left of listening, and it's only five, so I have plenty of time to meet my goal and go beyond, and I've been watching YouTube and Dilly Daddling, Dilly Dallying, I really, really, really need to clean the house, though, and I haven't done that at all because I've felt pretty groggy all day. So I think I'm going to find another book that I actually feel like listening and not stress about, like, I need to get to my library books first. Just find something that I'm actually really in the mood for and then clean the house because it really needs to be cleaned. It's 6.20 now. Chris still isn't home because he stopped at the store. He'll be home any minute, though thankfully. And I've listened to now an hour of a, a Duke by Default by Lizzie Cole. And I'm not really liking it. Oh, my phone just fell on the ground. <laughs> I just, I'm not, I mean, I really, really love The Woman Who Smashed Codes. But besides that, I'm just not having a good reading few days. 
and it kind of sucks. I, I don't know. I just, why am I not enjoying anything? I don't, I don't know. The book itself is fine. The narrator just can't do a Scottish accent at all. It's not good. It doesn't sound Scottish to me whatsoever. And I'm very annoyed by it. And so it just doesn't feel Scottish to me because she doesn't sound Scottish to me. Anyway, besides that, I don't know. I'm excited to learn more about Portia, I guess. She was an interesting character in the first book. But I didn't love the first book either. And I was hoping I'd like this one more. And so far... It's just not really doing it for me, so hopefully I can find something that I don't hate to read. That would be awesome. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to say about what happens at con. One of the things I really didn't like about it was just, like, the language she chose to use. A lot of the way that the men talked in it was just was so crass and offensive. And I get that it's supposed to be, but at the same time, I don't sympathize with that and I don't feel okay I don't know that's not making me want to give this character a chance it's not making me want to give these other characters potential chances in future books if they're either a okay with it or b doing it themselves because even if you're not participating and speaking that way the fact that you're totally fine with your friends doing it and speaking about women in that manner is frankly disgusting. And I don't know. It just, I don't know. I don't feel like I ex explained myself very well earlier of why I didn't enjoy it. And I get writing some gray characters can be interesting, but that's n it's not what I wanted because the characters were never really redeemed for me. Okay, you've changed your tune and you want to be in a relationship. Good for you, I guess. And you're not talking about women as horribly as you used to. But you're still seeing it. You're still seeing her as a possession. And I don't know. It was just... Just wasn't for me. And I don't recommend it. You made it home safely. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah. You Made got it home, home late. So late. I am doing the keto stuff right now, like eating keto, and so like I'm trying some new things this weekend, and so I went to the store a bunch, but I made, it's just beef and cheese and asparagus. Yum. So. I have mine too. Unfancy. It's like the exact opposite of fancy, but it's going to be tasty anyway. It's so good. He made it a few days ago, and yeah. It's literally it just was... meat and cheese and salt, and... <laughs> All the stuff I need to eat on <laughs> keto. Yeah. And we're super awesome, and we're going to be watching uh, the Tetris... The Classic Tetris World Championship from 2017. Yeah. Which we're starting it just now, the top 32. They're still having preliminary rounds going for what's going to be for 18. Yeah, 2018. The, like, and all of the regional uh, competitions, like they... They just did the southern one. They do like ones for all the regions. Yeah, and, and we've been watching some of those, but we never watched the 2017. We've only watched the 2016. So yeah, we're gonna... all the way through. We only watched 2016. But you guys, if you haven't watched, wow, well, that hair. Well, if you haven't watched Tetris Championships, you should try it. They're really fascinating. The players are so good, and it's baffling how good they it are. It gets me very. Intense, and I get Giselle really into it. Giselle literally lost her voice a few days ago <laughs> because she was yelling at the TV. She was like, "No, what are you doing? What are you?" She was like a sports fan watching football or something, and we were just sitting here watching Tetris while I was just staring at her. Like, <laughs> to be fair, I was already sick. My voice was kind of already going. I just didn't help it along by yelling at the TV a lot. I got super into it. So anyway, we're gonna do this. We're gonna eat dinner. It's gonna be delicious. How is it? Is it good? Yeah, it's good. Alright, I'm hungry. Let's go. It has been a very different day than anticipated. It's now um, 11.10 at night and strange. I met all my goals which I'm really happy about. So my minimum of what I want to reach on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays is 12 hours and then like my 
actual goal is like 14 but if I hit 12 I'll like be okay with it um, I ended up hitting 16 so I'm really quite pleased about that I feel like I could have read more I know I could have read more I could have read so much more but I actually watched quite a bit of YouTube uh, read listened, whatever um but I watched watch quite a bit of YouTube and I spent time with Christopher and stuff so it's like it's okay but like I feel like very dissatisfied with what I read and I feel like it's just because I didn't enjoy a lot of it so I loved the woman who smashed codes and that was a great way to like start off my morning but then born to be wild was a letdown I've decided to rate what happens at con uh, one star because the more I think about it I just really hated everything about it Ooh, ooh. So I listened to the second story in Summer Days and Summer Nights, which was by Nina LaCour. It was called The End of Love. I... I don't know. It wasn't bad, but I didn't care for it. I don't know. It was probably like a two and a half rounded up to a three star story. It just never gripped me. I was never like engaged. I was just kind of... I don't know, looking on from the outside. It wasn't as great as I wanted it to be. I don't know. Just like the ending was like very ambiguous and I just never was like super interested in what was happening to the character. Unlike the first story where I was like very intrigued and I got like super into it really fast. This one just didn't do that for me. So I don't know. It was like maybe a three star. I... I feel very, like, mm, ambiguous about it. Anyway, so I did that, which was good that I listened to my next story of that. And then I also started three more books because I just, I'm in such a weird, funky reading mood now that I read these things that I don't like. I want to find something that really grips me. So I started several things. Uh, the first thing is... A Tree Grows in Brooklyn uh, by Betty Smith. This is a little bit of a thick book. It's uh, This edition is about 500 pages. I'm listening to it, but uh, so far I'm on page 35, and I'm actually quite liking it so far. This one, since I wasn't sure if I would get super engaged in it, I was initially just planning on listening to two hours every day. I was planning on starting it tomorrow, but I just figured I'd start it tonight, see how I felt, and I'm actually liking it so far. I really am relating to the main character. She's a little bit of a tomboy, she like follows her older brother around, and she loves reading and the way that she talks about like books and stuff I was just like that seems like something I would have done when I was a kid she's like reading through the whole library one book at a time alphabetically and I'm like that's so me as a kid and I don't know I just it's super interesting so far I just really wasn't I didn't know what to expect going into it so I'm really quite happy with it so far and I need to have it done by I don't know, like two weeks, so definitely we'll have it done by then since it's due at the library in I think eight days, so I need to finish it in that time period. And then the other things that I started, um, one of them's quite interesting, I did, I had no idea what, I like going into books blind, but then I always get really surprised because they end up being super wacky. So, um, Box of Frogs by Helen Harper, this is the first book in a new series by her, I don't know if it's focusing, focus camera, focus. There we go. Box of Frogs by Helen Harper, the new book in the Fractured Fairy series. <laughs> so it like starts with her having amnesia, waking up next to um, a decapitated body and uh, people are chasing her and she doesn't know why because she doesn't know who she is. I'm an hour in. It's really weird and I don't know. It's super silly. It's the only thing that's like really silly. And like the Slouch Witch series, yes, it it was silly because the premise is that it's a lazy witch. But this is like above and beyond that. It's really, really interesting. I don't know. I it's funny and amusing. And she she figures out that she has some really like. Like, she's really fast, and she can, like, freeze down time a little bit. She figures out these things. She's like, I'm a superhero. So then she goes to the store and buys a cape, 
and like a leotard and like starts like prancing around the streets like trying to fight crime and I'm like what are you doing you're such a weirdo anyway it's it's interesting so far and I'll see how it goes I'm only an hour in and I don't know how it could possibly get stranger from how it is than it is right now, but it probably will. And then the other thing is uh, Duke by Default by Alyssa Cole. This is the second book in her um, Reluctant Royal series, and I'm just an hour into this one as well. I like forced myself to the hour point. It's not that I don't care for it, I just don't really care about it. I don't know. I was mentioning before that the, the narrator just does not have a good Scottish accent. It's just like really not getting me into the story. I don't know. Uh, this is one that I might put on hold and wait until after August to read when, I don't know, I'm just not really into it. Maybe I'll give it a few more days, just not think about it for a few days and come back to it later. That might be what I have to do because it's just not dragging me in so far. Anyway, I've been talking forever. This is gonna be such a long vlog, but I'm really, I don't know, my reading is good so far, and I'm, I don't know, I would have liked to finish one more book today, but I'm, I'm happy with it. And I think my bullet journal spread is coming out so pretty so far, and I think, ugh, I just can't wait. So, um, I filled in the first one of Tree Goes in Brooklyn, the first one of, like, these ones down here, and Tomorrow I gotta start with green, which is gonna be beautiful. Ow, I just shut that on my finger. And that's it for tonight. Chris has already gone to bed. I'm not really tired yet since I slept in really late, so I'll probably stay up and watch some more YouTube videos. Everyone's like booktubeathon vlogs are going up right now, so I'll probably watch some more of those. Um, probably listen to a little bit more of Box of Frogs and then end off my night. So I will see you in the morning and I'll probably have read something else, hopefully. Christopher made delicious bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers for lunch and we're watching more Tetris because we're trash people and we're obsessed and it is uh, 12.30 so I have to leave for work in about an hour. But this is lunch and Christopher made it all and they're so good. Really spicy. <laughs> Wow, this lighting is great. <laughs> I'm just too lazy to get the tripod out and everything right now. Anyway, you'll survive. Um, excuse any mess behind me as well. Uh, the house really needs to be cleaned. Anyway, it is... I'm not, like, vlogged at all today besides lunch, which was freaking delicious. It's the 4th. Saturday. So I had work. Um, it was, like, a 7-hour shift. And it was actually pretty fast. I'm still like, I'm extra coffee right now. I need to take some more cough medicine, especially since I was like really coughing a lot at work. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't vlog at all this morning because I was just laying in bed and I slept in kind of late and I don't know. I was just kind of like groggy all day. Today was a caffeine day, which I um, almost never have caffeine. Like I never, I don't drink coffee at all, but I almost never have like caffeinated soda or anything, but I always keep some at work just in case I need some. Just like a little can of cans of Mountain Dew. I literally bought like a six pack back in, I think like January, and I still have one left <laughs> after tonight. I had two left. Um, it was just that kind of day. So now I'm super hyper. It is 9.42, so I just got back like maybe 10 minutes ago. I've just been talking to Christopher and I figured I'd update you, so I didn't read as much today as I'd like to, but I'll probably be up till like 2 a.m. reading anyway. And I haven't filled in my bullet journal at all, but I figured I'd let you know what's going on. I, pretty much all I've been listening to today is the Box of Frogs. So I have two and a half hours left, so I'll finish that up really quickly. But I'm getting really close on this. It's so strange. It's such a bizarre book. I am really enjoying it. It'll probably be like a three-star read. Like, it's it's fun, but it's it's super wacko. Um, I don't know. It's hard to describe. It's really interesting, and I'm waiting. I'm still waiting for the box of frogs to get tied in. Nothing. I, they haven't even mentioned it so far, so. Anyway, 
what I did read today, though, and was, wasn't was on my TBR at all, and I haven't decided how it will fit in yet, so let's see if I can do that. Um, but I actually read at work The Adventure Zone. Um, Here There Be Gerblins, is that right? Yeah, Here There Be Gerblins. And this is based off of the podcast The Adventure Zone. This is by Clint Griffin, Justin, and Travis McElroy, and illustrated by Carrie Pytich. Anyway, this, I have not listened to their podcast. They have, like, several podcasts. I haven't listened to any of them. I just saw the cover, thought it was really intriguing, and it actually hit the number one spot in the New York Times bestselling list, which is insane for a graphic novel. That's so cool. And so... We had multiple copies, and I figured, hey, I'll just read it while I'm on register. So I did, and I really, I really enjoyed it. I think I would have liked it better if I had listened to the podcast, because even though I would have known what was coming, I think I would have had, like, the characters, like, voices in my head, but I understood everything that was going on. It was funny. The sarcasm was really great. There is a lot of language, so if you don't like language in your books, um, be warned. But I... I don't know, I really liked it a lot. It was super fun. So let's see what it could fit into. It could fit into several of these, but I I have certain books that I need to read this month, so it can't go into any of those slots. I'm looking for the ones that are can be switched out. Let me see. Set on a different planet slash world. I mean it's a it's a made up world, but that counts. And it has it ha I don't know. <laughs> There's like a GM talking throughout the whole thing. It was interesting. I don't know how long this is. Let me see. It's it's almost 300 pages long, so it doesn't count for any of the short books. Um, I might have to do it for a book that has illustrations. I am going to probably end up reading this month anyway, just like to take a breather, Yotsuba, which was my original one for that, so who knows, but I read it. Even if it doesn't count for the readathon, I'm still really glad that I did, and I need to take Yotsuba to work with me now that I'm thinking about it for when I'm on register so I can, like, get a little bit, bit of reading done then. Anyway, I'm just gonna sit here. I'm gonna finish listening to Box of Frogs. I'm gonna fill in any bullet journal stuff for the day, and then I also need to get my hour of, what is it called, summer days and summer nights? I need to get my hour of that in today, because I can't be missing a day on the rainbow. That's just not acceptable. Today's color is this, like, really pretty dark green. I did fill in a tiny bit this morning, and it looks like that, and I think it's quite gorgeous. I, green is my favorite color, in case you didn't know. Anyway, I'm rambling. This is going to be a thing, but I read another book. Um, I guess I could count it, and then that would be four for four. And then I'm going to have this one read and hopefully I can finish one or two more books tomorrow. So I think I'll be in a good place tomorrow night. Let's read. I can get hold of duct tape, but I really need it, Maddie. When I hit record, the f stupid fridge starts yelling. <laughs> Welcome to my life, you guys. So it is Sunday morning, it's 10 a.m., and I've been up for three hours, four hours, somewhere around there, just listening to my audiobooks uh, and laying in bed. Uh, Chris was a, he slept in a little late today, um, probably got up like half an hour ago, so I was just. Um, we were just snuggling because we love each other. Anyway, <laughs> um, I tried to start listening to To Love a Duchess. This is by Karen Ranny. Ranny. You can see I got 15 minutes in, so obviously it didn't go very well. I just... I really need to check narrators on stuff before <laughs> I <laughs> check books out. But, I don't know. I just... I don't love romance books narrated by male narrators. It just, I don't know, not my thing. And I know a lot of people really love it. I'm just not one of those people, and I don't like his voice. It's just kind of boring, and I'm not engaged, and I don't care. So I think I'm just going to return this. There's like six people on hold after me, so 
I'm just going to return it early. I've had it checked out for like four days, so it's not really that big of a deal. But I think I'm just going to return it and let those other people have it who want it and choose another book. So this was originally going to be my book with green on the cover because uh, it's very green. But I think instead I'm going to, since I knocked Yotsuba out of a book with illustrations, I think I'm going to put Yotsuba in as a book with green on the cover because Yotsuba has green hair. So that's the, that's the plan for now. We'll see how that stays. So return loan to the library. Perfect. All right. So also what happened is I did last night, I did end up finishing Box of Frogs by Helen Harper and it was, it was a super bizarre book with a cliffhanger. Like it didn't feel resolved at all at the end. The other two books out in, are out in this series. This, they just came out... I mean, this one just came out in Ju July. And they all came out at the same time. She's a self-published author. But only the first audiobook is out. I don't know if the other books are going to be turned into audio. I would think so because all of her other books are on audio. But this, the sequels aren't yet. So when and if they get put on audio, I will get to them. But... Um, I mean, I liked it. It was just, like, really, really weird. I don't know if I ever fully talked what it was about, but basically it just felt like a writing prompt that she was given the prompt to, what if an evil fairy loses her memory? It was really strange. Her personality is really interesting. It almost, her personality almost reminded me of, like, a Sophie Kinsella heroine. I don't know they're just they jump to the strangest conclusions and have the most weird reactions to things that really don't make sense to me but like okay and you're just kind of along for the ride watching this person do really weird stuff that's what I felt like I felt the same way of reading a Sophie Kinsella book to me so if you like Sophie Kinsella and want to try getting into urban fantasy, you could try this book and maybe you like it. I don't know. The Sophie Kinsella heroines always kind of bother me, so... Uh, I don't know. Anyway, that's the thing. I finished it last night, and I said that I was going to listen to Summer Days and Summer Nights last night, but I fell asleep listening to it. It was very boring. The story that I'm on, I think it's by Libba Bray... And I don't care at all. I think I'm like 15 minutes into it and it's really boring. So I think I might give it a little bit more and then maybe DNF it because I don't care about that story and just move on to the next one. I mean, at least the last story, which I did decide to give two stars, the Nina LaCour one. I was like, maybe I'll give it three stars. I just don't really care about it. So I think I'll give it two stars. At least it was somewhat engaging enough to to finish listening to but again I just like female narrators more and since this one especially this one's narrated by a male and his best friend is so annoying oh my gosh I just I ugh, don't care anyway I'm sorry for all the cuts by the way that's all my coughing breaks because I can't seem to stop coughing right now really fun anyway the last thing that I'll update you on is a duke by default this is by Alyssa Cole and I've made a a really massive dent in it. Look how far I am through. I'm almost nine hours. Um, just have a three and a half left. So I think I'll, I can finish this, um, up pretty soon. Hopefully by noon. And I am liking it better now. I think I did just need to take, like, a couple day break from it. But I am liking it better. And I really am feeling, I don't know, I'm relating more and more to Portia as the story goes on. She's such, like, I don't know, like, not a super gray character. Like, she's not necessarily, like, bad. But she's not a great friend. She's kind of obnoxious, kind of flighty stuff in the first book that you see of her. So I was really interested to see, like, to be able to, like, see from her perspective and, like, get behind the scenes on her a little bit more in this book. And I think Alyssa Cole is doing a really good job of that. And... I feel so much more, like, connected to her, and I don't know, I guess she just has a family full of, like, smart people, 
and she doesn't consider herself, like, smart enough or good enough in so many ways, and uh, coming from a big family full of really awesome people, I can really relate to that, so I am liking it so much better now. It just took me a little bit to get into it. Um, I'm not necessarily loving the plot, but I like the character quite a bit. Anyway, I'm gonna keep listening to that, try to see how I stand on that Summer Days and Summer Nights story, and then move on to the next story today, hopefully. I don't know. I might just, like, push my plans back on reading this a little bit more and just, like, skip a story yesterday instead of doubling up. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Either way, the book will get read, so whatever. Um, but with finishing this, I think I'll be able to finish one more book today, which would be awesome as well if I finished two books today and then I could feel a little bit ahead. Um, because once I finish this, I'll be at six books on day five, which is awesome, but I'd like to be more than that ahead so that I don't start feeling anxious. So it's 11.25 and I just finished a Duke by Default by Alyssa Cole. Um, I don't know. Like I said before, I didn't love the plot and a lot of the, <coughs> the the directions that she chose to take it. I don't know. I just, hmm, it's like modern day royalty books. And I don't know if that super works for me personally. So it's like, I feel like it is a personal problem with me about like maybe the story, but I enjoyed this one so much better than the first one. The first one I had major issues with. There was, I don't know, I felt like issues with consent. Just to briefly gloss over it, he lies about who he is and then has sex with her, which I take major issue with. And that's what really, really like, ugh, made me not like the first book is everything that happened after that point, I just found like super creepy and disturbing. Anyway, this one I didn't have any issues with like that. I just, I found it very, very ridiculous and a lot of the things that happened was just, had me rolling my eyes a bit, but I really liked the characters a lot. I really liked Portia and I cried for like a good solid minute <laughs> while listening to this book. Um, I did listen to it on three times speed, which I know it sounds ridiculous, but I, I don't know, I don't think I would have liked it as much if I was listening to it at a lower speed, but speeding it up and getting through it faster I think made me enjoy it more. Either way, I did like it. It's a three star read for me. There were some things that I really liked and some things that just didn't work for me personally, so I think a three star is a good medium. But I did, I really liked the characters and I really liked um, the women's support in it. I love her relationship with her best friend and her sister. I loved his relationship with his stepdad and the fact that even though it's not his real dad, his biological dad, that they have such a good relationship and that he really is his father and stuff. I really loved seeing that and not having this like built up resentment of like, what if he doesn't love me as much because I'm not his real son? Like, they just had a great relationship, and I liked that a lot. And, I don't know, there's just some really good things about this book. So, I mean, I recommend it. I don't recommend the first book, but I know a lot of people love the first book. But this one, I thought was excellent. And I will I will continue on with the series, even though it maybe doesn't seem like I should because of how I personally feel about it. But I genuinely really did like this one, and I do like her writing. And I'm excited to see where the series goes and who's going to be, like, the next person on the list. Um, there's also an ace character in here, which I thought was interesting. I rarely see that in books. I don't know if I've ever really seen that in books. It's not, it's not like a super main character, but one of the side characters is ace and openly talks about it. So that was good as well. Anyway, I enjoyed it and now I can move on and try to read the next story in summer days and summer nights. So I haven't worn makeup in the past month. If you watched my live stream, I like talked about it, but I've just felt really under the weather for the past month, um, like mentally, so, and then physically as well. So I just didn't wear makeup, but I finally put on makeup today and it just made me feel really nice. I don't know, I didn't do it like for any particular reason other than just like I missed putting makeup on. And I just thought it was so fun, and this is the dress that I wore and everything. Anyway, I just figured I'd update you on stuff. I think I told you, yeah, I finished um, Duke, A Duke by Default. I ended up finishing that. I tried to listen 
to the Libba Bray story and I DNF'd it. And now I'm trying to listen to the story by Francesca Leah Block and I also really hate her writing. So I think I'm going to DNF both of those and then try the next one. I don't know. They're just really not working for me. And I feel like kind of bad using this as one of my newts books, like if I'm going to DNF a lot of them. But at the same time, I don't know. Because I want to read them this month. They have to get read this month because this is the last month of summer. So, I don't know. I'll have to see what I end up doing, but I think I'm going to put it down for the day because that's like, I just DNF'd like three hours of the book with those two stories, so. Anyway, I'll have to move on. I don't know who the next story is by, but I'll have to try that one. And I'm listening to a little bit more of, oh gosh, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, but I haven't gotten that far. I'm not even at the two hour mark yet, so I need to really sit down and try to listen to like maybe three hours of that today so that I can at least keep up so I don't fall behind. Anyway, I'm gonna, Chris and I are gonna do laundry now and then he's gonna edit vlogs and I'm gonna read and clean the freaking apartment, especially this bedroom because it is such a train wreck. It needs to happen today. It's like six o'clock now. I'm listening to A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. I listened to like maybe an hour or an hour and a half to two hours of uh, Kill the Farm Boy. It's really weird, but I decided to switch back to A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Um, I'm th almost three hours through it now. Uh, this is how far I am. And I just came pass across a, passion a passage that I really, really loved. It's like three pages long, so I'm not going to read it to you. But it just really, really resonated with me. I was just telling Chris about it, and I had like tears running down my face. It's this German lady talking of basically explaining like the American dream. And it just hit me like really hard. And I don't know, just being as long as long as you like work hard you can get anywhere and how that wasn't like a thing in other countries for such a long time and she's talking about how she's like if you want your kids to do well if you're if you want your kids to do well for themselves teach them a love of books teach them a love of reading teach them Read to them Shakespeare, read them the Bible, read them these great works and bestow that love of reading upon them, bestow that love of knowledge upon them. Tell them fairy tales, tell them folklore, tell them stories of their heritage. And these are all the things that will make them prosper. And I just thought it was really, really beautiful. like tell them about Santa Claus and give them that like spirit of like joy and things to look forward to and stuff and like that's how they'll succeed and grow well. I don't know it was just really really beautiful. I It's one of my favorite things I've maybe ever read ever and I was just I don't know I was just sobbing it really affected me a lot and I don't know, I guess maybe because I feel like that's what I had, that's what my parents gave me, that they read to me all the time growing up. My dad read to me almost every day. My mom read to me almost every day. And they gave me such a love of knowledge and a love of all these things. And I feel like I'm a million times of a better person because of it. And I can like love the person I am because, and I felt like I could do anything I don't know, it just... <laughs> I 
Oh, I didn't expect to cry in this vlog. I'm sorry. I just really liked it. And I don't know. Besides that, I am enjoying the book. But that just... Oh, it's on page 83 in this edition. And... Um... I need a tissue. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I've just been cleaning the room though. I I cleaned the section that I showed you and then I've been like working my way over this way and I've been cleaning more. And then I need to do laundry. And then, I mean, the laundry is running right now, but then I need to like fold it and actually put it away and hang it up and stuff. And then Chris is making dinner right now. I think he's making shrimp, cauliflower, rice, and gluten-free biscuits so we'll see how that works and yeah I don't know I'm liking it a lot so far it's I don't think I'm understanding everything that's going on but it's really interesting so I'll keep working on that I'd love to get to hour four today which will be really easy hour six would I be ideal but hour four is good and then from there I can just read whatever I want for the rest of the night um I do Skype with um, my parents-in-law every Sunday night for like, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour. So that's time that I can't read. And then I'll probably take like an hour. That's him making food. I don't know why it's so loud. I'll probably take like an hour or so to, to eat food with Christopher. So let's see what he's doing. Chris is watching Disney vlogs over here because he is obsessed with anything Disney. Um, what is this? This is ke this is keto biscuits. Keto biscuits, so gluten free biscuits. What 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 is this? It's just the dry mixture. The dry mixture. I have to mix the two together. Is it? Me. What is it like? Almond flour? Did you say? Yeah, it's almond flour. Interesting. And we have some garlic, and we're gonna have some shrimp. I'm excited. And there's the cauliflower for some cauliflower rice. Yes. I guess I need to go switch the laundry and keep listening to my book. <sighs> This is the end result. Uh, the cauliflower <laughs> rice turned a little bit mushier than I wanted it to because I just messed it up a little bit. Biscuits looks pretty good. Uh, and the shrimp tastes as good. I did try shrimp already. It tastes very good. So. Let me see the, the, the biscuit. It might be a little bit too crumbly or maybe not. It didn't like no. all, it didn't all crumble out. I thought it might. Mm. Is it good? It's <laughs> really good. Don't it you is, think so? It is really good. <laughs> it's really good. It almost has the texture of like cornbread, but less yeah. dense. It's not as dense bit. as cornbread. It's good. I like it. I really like that a lot. Nice. Now let me try the cauliflower rice, because um, I'm curious. It's too hot. <laughs> it doesn't like taste like rice. No. People were saying there's a fly flying around. That's why Chris is freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a... I know. People were saying that it tastes just like rice, and I'm like, I doubt that, but... Well, it, it might taste like rice if I did it correctly, but I didn't. It's just like mush. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of mushy. I know. Sorry about that. That's fine. Did I know. Fly? Like it, it tastes good. It just doesn't really have a taste beyond like the the shrimp and the garlic. Yeah. I don't know. It's good though. It's garlic shrimp, by the way. Um, garlic shrimp with cauliflower rice. I haven't talked about it yet, but I decided a few days ago that I would. <laughs> it's over there now. That I would go keto with Christopher. Yeah. Just because. I need my pants to fit before winter, and I don't fit any of my pants right now. She has barely anything to lose. I have a lot to lose. She has barely anything to lose. I'd like to lose, like, 10-ish ten, pounds. I think if she did this, like, nice and strictly like I'm doing it, I think she would lose weight pretty quickly, and then she could stop after a little while, and then I... Yeah. I will have to keep on doing it. I just need to, like, stay on top of, like, not, like, binging on Oreos for, like, four weeks in a row. <laughs> so I just well, need a little, lose a little bit of weight so that my pants will fit. So I'm gonna go keto for just like two months, maybe. And it'll and help see that, that I'm, helps. it'll help that I'm already making this stuff for myself, and I'm just making double of it for Giselle as well. And yeah, it'll be good. I'll try to help start cooking as well. But anyway, we're also watching more Tetris, and we're gonna eat, and it will be wonderful. It's really good, babe. Thanks. quick update on the room. Got rid of that huge giant pile of clothes. I hung them all up. I still need to clean this, but I'm gonna do that a different day when I hurt less. I organized all this, which I showed you. It could be organized more, but at least it's all together. And this is like my 
travel makeup case. So I would like to like do unpack that and stuff and my little unicorn like ring and some earrings that I wore recently. And then like I cleared out a lot down there. I still need to organize these. Like it's getting there. This needs to get hung up on here. They're lights. I cleared this all out. There was like a ton of like clothes and stuff here too. And then all my like lipstick because I'm a hoarder. <laughs> I still need to clear out down there as well. And then I cleared out a lot of the stuff in here as well. And I hung up all my clothes, which I need to organize more. But again, I kind of hurt. And the bed is all cleared off because I had it completely covered. And all I need to do really is like finish organizing books. I have a ton more out there. And organize this and like organize little things. But like the floor it hasn't been this clear in a really long time. All right. It's, it's quite late now. <laughs> it is 10.15 p.m. Uh, so I'll be going to bed soon. Uh, I gotta say, today's been a little rough. I, I don't know, today was another pretty bad neck pain day. So bad that I, I don't know, I took more medicine than I usually do for it because it just like kept on persisting and I put like a lot of cream on it and everything that like normally works and normally at least makes it like more tolerable but it's still just like persisting and it's quite obnoxious. Anyway, <laughs> I made it to book three or part three. I think it just, no, book three in A Tree Goes in Brooklyn. Um, I'm on page 125-ish, which I don't know, I'm actually quite happy with. It's like a satisfying place to end and I'm liking it so far. I don't know, it's, it's really interesting. It's I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't what I was expecting. So it's it's keeping it fresh. So I, as you can see, I got a little bit further in that, which is good. And then you can see I went through a ton of summer days and summer nights today because I'm just counting even like the hours that I DNF'd because like that's how far I am through the audiobook and I don't want to like draw lines in the middle and stuff. So my rainbow is getting all skewed. I don't know, I got a little hooked. So I listened to... I DNF'd those two that I said, the Francesca Leah Block and then the Lipa Bray one. I listened to Stephanie Perkins, which I think is a five star story for me. I really liked it a lot. Um, if you haven't read My True Love Gave to Me, that's the one. <laughs> if you haven't read My True Love Gave to Me, I'd recommend reading that one first because it's about the same character. So her short story and that one, this all is the same character as like five months later or so. I really really loved it. It made my heart really happy and it made me smile a lot and it was just so cute and I, I really enjoyed it. And then the next one that I read, Souvenirs by Tim Fetterly, um, was uh, the one that I just listened to. I didn't like that one at all. I think it's a one star story for me. I don't know. I just, ugh, it was really obnoxious. The character just the relationship was like so shallow and superficial and stupid and it it really made me sad it was this guy's first boyfriend and i'm like what a not great first boyfriend like maybe i just got spo spoiled with my first boyfriend for having like a sweet amazing incredible boyfriend but i just like it made me feel really like depressed and gloomy for him i'm like that really sucks like he's like very like, only cares about himself, very, like, self-focused, always center of attention, blah, 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 and, like, ignores his boyfriend all the time. The boyfriend's the main character. This main character, his boyfriend always ignores him and is just so, ugh, it really irritated me. I'm like, I don't think this is romantic or a romance because it just made me really sad and depressed and then... Basically, he's just like waiting for summer to end. It's like the last day of summer and he knows that they're gonna break up this day because at the beginning of the summer they're like, we're gonna break up and the boyfriend like hid their relationship the whole time and kept it a secret from everyone and ah, it just really bummed me out. And then at the end, and I, this is what got me to me the most, that the main character is thinking about how, I don't know, the whole book he's thinking about how like 
the story, I guess it's not a whole book, the whole story he's thinking about like how obnoxious this person is, how it's really better that they're breaking up because he's so annoying and self-centered and all this stuff. And then at the end, the guy's like, I could go on and on forever about um, all the things I like about you. And he literally lists like four or five things that he likes about him. And the main guy is like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you can think of so many nice things to say about me. And I was like, really? <laughs> He's treated you so badly this whole relationship that you're literally shocked that he can think of a whole four things that he likes about you. Like, oh my gosh. <sighs> I give up. I don't know. It was just, ugh, it really irritated me. I mean... I guess it's good that it was, it wasn't a big deal that they were gay, it was just like, how they were, and it wasn't like a huge like, oh, their fair parents like disown them, or hate them, or all this stuff, like they're openly gay, and out, and everything, like, I guess that's, that's a positive thing, that it wasn't like a huge deal, but I just hated the relationship so much, I'm like, clutching this book in anger, ugh, it really made me mad, so, that happened. So I didn't like that story at all, but I did. I didn't really love the Stephanie Perkins ones. I see she can write good stuff. I don't know why Anna and the French Kiss suck so much. She can write good stuff. Anyway, I keep looking up at my true love gave to me and I don't know. Mm -mm. I'm I'm like so like in the middle right now. I had two stories I really loved, two stories I DNF'd, and two stories I've hated or get disliked. <laughs> so I guess it's much more leaning and like negative stuff so now I don't know I have to at least give this book a three star rating like as an average in order to buy it but I almost want to buy it just for that Stephanie Perkins story the nice like matching edition to my true love gift to me I don't know if I've shown it here let me grab it I want to buy the UK edition that matches this one because it's so beautiful it has like the hot pink pages and like the beautiful gold bookmark and it's like good gold and foiled and stunning and I would really love to buy the edition that matches this one. Oh my gosh. It's so pretty. I love the edition of this book. It's like all buttery feeling. Okay. <laughs> I need to calm down. Anyway, I'm quite happy with the progress I made today. I mean, including all the like ones that I had marked for summer days and summer nights. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nineteen for today. Which I'd say is pretty good. And not including like the three hours that I skipped in summer days and summer nights. It's still sixteen hours, which is two above my goal, my like stretch goal. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I didn't fin I didn't finish anything else today, unfortunately, and I'm not going to at this point. I thought I would get a lot further into something else, but I just ended up spending a lot of time with Christopher. We watched quite a bit of Tetris, and it got really intense, and then I started having, like, chest pains from, like, how intense it was. Y'all, I'm so glad I'm not a sports fan, because if I was, I would be overly anxious all the time about it I could not see matches because I literally think it would give me a heart attack anyway I think that's it for today and I think this is actually where I'm gonna wrap up the vlog because I think I'm just too wordy and rambly but I hope you guys are enjoying and seeing these like little snippets of our lives um it's been so fun vlogging and I'm excited to see how things continue over the rest of the month and hopefully be able to complete this readathon but so far it is day five it's day five i finished six things and i have two e's i have an e in i have an e in muggle studies and i have an e in care of magical creatures so i guess to wrap up what i've read so far this month i read a book that has illustrations for her herbology but it was for an e so it doesn't count yet i've read a book that is set in a kingdom slash has royals that's an O for Transfiguration, so it doesn't count. And then I read two thing, four things that did count. I read a book from a favorite author, which was Born to be Wild by Eloisa James. And then I read a biography, The Woman Who Smashed Codes by Jason Fagon. So that counted as my A and my E in Muggle Studies. 
And then an animal on the cover is Box of Frogs um, by Helen Harper and a book less than 160 pages is What Happens at Con by Kathy Yardley. So that is an a, my A and E in Care of Magical Creatures. And then I also DNF'd Kiss of the Spindle by Nancy Campbell Allen. <coughs> Nancy Allen Campbell? I don't know. One of those two. Because it sucked. I did pretty good this week. I'm <laughs> pretty proud of myself. Anyway, I will see you in the next vlog in like a week. And you would have already heard of most of these in the live stream at this point because I did a live stream today. I don't know if I mentioned that. I live streamed today for a bit as well and talked about the books. So hopefully it wasn't too repetitious to watch this. Anyway, I'll just shut up. Goodbye and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone. Final stats for the day.